the surplus money that we have and purchase a bus for Dr. Martin Luther King and put it down and get it uh, erected downtown. I don't know where the thought came from other than the fact that it, would been, it had been then dormant in my mind for 40 years. And so from that, um, I think Sister Ashburn and some others just supplied the evidence to getting donations to erect this bus. And I believe, uh, as I speak, we must be somewhere in the neighborhood around about seven to $8,000. That 400... <laughs> that 400 and... $60 item now will cost us $10,000 at a minimum. That's inflation. <laughs> that's, the, that's the foundation, the uh, stand, and the bust itself. And thanks to you, thanks to you, all of you, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> Did you, did you notice this? Did, did you notice this? I haven't shared this with Sister Ashburn. Uh, you know, I, I meditate a lot, you know. And in my solitude, I was thinking, in our bicentennial year, this idea was born. Now, in our bicentennial year in Sandusky, it's coming to fruition. Can you share the story about what led up to you becoming mayor and, and consul? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Well, really, uh, I, uh, I, was, I, I was selfish. I've always been selfish. <laughs> I really wanted some time for my wife and I. Uh, um, we only had one job. He had gone to college. He had graduated, and he had gotten drafted by some protein. I'm not going to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to mention it. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, uh, those responsibilities, you know, marriage and use forever, you know. Uh, he can take care of himself now. Now's the time for my wife and I to do some things that we would like to do, you know, travel a little bit or whatever. And Mr. Severs, Mr. Clarence Severs, came to me. <laughs> yeah. And here again, here's a person that knows how to uh, convince me. And he convinced me to run for city commission. He had run, uh, Reverend Ashburn had run, uh, Attorney Oglesby, different ones. But for some reason, Clarence felt that I could get elected. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that. And I had served on HRC, that's the Human Relations Commission. Mm -hmm. And I had served with some very nice people, uh, Father Leffler, uh, John Frost, and different ones, uh, Reverend Stellhorn. And uh, I said, well, I'll tell you what. If we can get a committee, uh, committee, a multi-racial committee, a uh, multi-denominational committee, don't want all Baptists, don't want all Methodists, I can't. If we can get a committee, male and female, young that can't vote, we'll have them to uh, serve on the telephone committee. Uh, so I'll agree to it. And that's what we did. We got, uh, your sister was a telephone committee, wasn't she? Yeah, she was a telephone committee. Yeah. And uh, I think she was about 12 years of age at that time. But anyway, we, we tried to get a, a cross-section and a true representative of the community. And that's what we did. And I was fortunate. I came in with the highest vote uh, for that election year. Uh, the second time I ran, I came in with the highest vote. The third time I ran, I came in with the highest vote. And I said, well, now, something's, something's happening here. <laughs> and uh, either I'm not doing what I should be doing, uh, I'm doing it too well, and I doubt I'm doing it too well, so I just better give it up. 
And so that's what I did. Um, to be honest with you, Lando, kidding aside, when I was a, a junior in high school, I had a strong calling on me uh, for the Lord to be the end of the ministry. I worked at Franco's up here, and I worked with a friend of mine called <coughs> Lee Coombs. Some of you know him. And Lee was going to Wilberforce University, wanted me to go with him. But I wanted to do it my way. I wanted to go to Wilberforce University. First, I want to have my own car. I want to have three or four suits that I can wear on the campus. <laughs> and I said, Lee, I'm going to work a year. And Lee says, okay, I'm going. So Lee, Lee went. Uh, I worked a year. And another friend of mine, Dan, Bruce Alexander, he had worked a year, and he was at Baldwin Wallace. And he came to me, he said, Tom, get out and go to school. Don't work. He said, I almost made the same mistake. I worked a year, Belgi, almost didn't go to school, but he did go. And as a result, I kept going to do it my way, do it my way. Time passed, time passed, time passed. When it came time to, uh, uh, Mr. Sievers came for me to run for city commission. I was really running from my calling to go into the ministry. And I went <coughs> into politics. And I, I remember sitting at uh, the table at City Hall and talking <coughs> about what a disgrace politicians were in the person of Richard Nixon. And then I looked at myself and said, well, you won yourself. <laughs> and I said, i got to get out of here and get about my father's business because this is not a place for me. And the first chance I got, I got out and went into my studies to be an uh, ordained minister. And that's where I've been. No regrets. Thank you, uh, Mr. Murphy. First of all, thank you to both of you for this uh, outstanding oral history lesson we're getting tonight. Uh, this question is for Mrs. Farrar. Uh, based on your distinguished uh, educational career, uh, what advice would you offer parents and educators today based on your extensive experience? Encourage your children, please. I come from nothing. My parents had nothing. So if I use that as an excuse, I never would have done anything. Right. Yeah. But just when I was teaching, I always tell the parents, always encourage your children. Don't tell them, I don't have the money for you to go to college. You never know what's going to happen. Right. Always encourage your children to go to college. You might not have anything now, but when they graduate, there may be grants they can get. But always encourage them to go as high as they can go. And I'd like to expound a little bit more on Sandusky. That Sandusky, I've been here all my life, 96 years. They haven't been the best, but they are doing so much better. Look at our black superintendents. <laughs> and thank the Lord for him. See, things will change. Yes. Things were a lot different, but I'm just so happy that there are so many black teachers in high positions. They weren't that way when I come along, but I am so happy for Sandusky because I know Sandusky will make it. And our uh, president of the school board, Bridget Green Churchwell, when I come along, there was no such thing as that. You weren't encouraged in the high school to join any of the clubs or anything. And where you're not wanted, you don't go. Maybe we should have tried a little harder, but we didn't. And they had the commercial club and all that. Well, no one ever encouraged it. So the blacks didn't get in. About the only thing they got in was the glee club. But you know, as black people, we love to sing. <laughs> So they would always, and they had beautiful voices. I had a, 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 a grade school teacher that they had uh, festivals 
and you were not picked. You were not picked. But she took a group of black girls, they had such pretty voices, Rosie Simmons, Marion Thompson, me, and Frances Craig. And she made a quartet of us. And when she would go to her clubs, she would take us to her clubs to sing and whatnot. So I've had some nice teachers. As I said, Sandusky is my home. There's a lot of things that went wrong, but there is so much more improvement, and I can see it. And I'm just happy. Right. Thank you, Ms. Farrar. <laughs> Ms. Farrar, yes. when did you start teaching at Sandusky? I started teaching in, let me see, I, I uh, retired in 84, and I taught 20 years. So, subtract that. <laughs> 1964. Yeah. Another thing I want to say. Uh, I, I uh, commend the Board of Education. They might not have hired teachers and all that, but Louise Roseman, I don't know if any of you know, she was the first black teacher hired in Sandusky. And they liked her so well, and I will give the Board of Education this credit. After that, they had a committee to go south and recruit black teachers. And they had black teachers here. I will always give them credit for that. For years they didn't hire any because I didn't get hired. But I don't hold that against them because there's been so much progress. And I'm so happy to see so many black teachers that we have now in high positions like our superintendent. So we all have to be thankful for things like that. Things don't always stay the same. Amen. Amen. Can I, can I follow up to that? Mrs. Ashton? Can I follow up? Or Ms. Brower, I'm sorry. What I was going to bring up is... Uh, over here. Over here. I'm sorry. All right. Stand up. I am standing. Oh. <laughs> he wasn't there. That's my <laughs> When uh, my father was PTA president in the late 1950s at Perkins, they hired Mrs. Ashburn. Yes. As a teacher, uh -huh. she was the first African American teacher that was hired out there, and I remember he went. Well, I don't remember because yeah. I was very young. Exie, Exie, thank you. That's Exie Ashburn, uh -huh. and she came to speak to our CBBS Confederation for the Betterment of Black Students. Oh, about 10, 15 years ago, she was very good then. Oh yeah. But I remember my father coming home and saying her classroom was the most beautiful classroom, the most perfect classroom I've ever seen, and she says it has to be. It has to be. I'm the only African American teacher in this district, right. and they're all looking at me. Well, I so my I kudos had, to you. I think I had one of the best classes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. I, I meet so many of them nowadays. They've grown up, and they remember me, and they'll always say, "Mrs. Brown, you were the best teacher I ever had." I said, "I'll bet when I had you, you didn't think." <laughs> You were the best teacher, Mr. Rob. Thank you. You were the best. Question right here, and then we're going to get to Mrs. Burke. Uh, Mrs. Frog, this uh, question kind of uh, is motivated based on what Chris's question was. What, what kind of mistreatment, if any, did you experience as a successful woman who is African American? And uh, did you sense that anyone was trying to sabotage your success? And could you? Tell us how you handled that, if that were the case. No, I taught with some beautiful teachers. They had never taught with blacks before, but they were beautiful. They, they were very nice. I only want, had one instance, I didn't say anything, and I'm sorry for that today, but we can't let those things stay on our mind, you know. But uh, I taught with a beautiful, I, I can't call all the names, I call some names. When you get my age, you find out you don't remember everything right now. <laughs> But I taught with, and I had some beautiful students. I used to lecture my students. And I'd say, you might not remember. <laughs> my students look at it right now. I'd say, you might not remember it now. But later on, you're going to think about what I said. Because that's what my mother did to me. She would lecture me, and I didn't want to hear it. Of course, I couldn't say anything. No talking back at No, 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 no. But... I found out later that everything she said, some of you that I know in here, I have a lot of people that I know in here, you remember the same things. What they told you came to pass later on. So listen to your parents, children. 
You may not like what they're saying now, but later on in your life you're going to remember. Okay? My name is Frankie Bird, and my question is from Pastor Darden. I think you and I were talking one time, and we were talking about swimming, when you went swimming at the high school, and how they had the, uh, when, for gym class I believe it was, that you, they'd have the, uh, some ducks or something that would be... Oh, okay, not at the high school. Uh, yeah. Battery Park. Oh, Park. oh is, that, is that the reason for the duck down that they have now? The duck derby? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, what she is referring to, I heard someone else at Barry Park, so well, Dan's here. He's, he's not as old as I, but I think he can testify. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Battery Park Public uh, Marina. We would go down there and swim. Now, you couldn't swim period at high school, so that's, that's out. But you could swim at Battery Park. But there was a string of ducks. 